Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about concurrency with Go channels. Uh, I know I promised this about maybe a week or two ago, but I haven't been able to get to it because of work pressures. But I finally got around to getting this uh, the tutorial written on my website and uh, recording this video, so here we go today. All right, so what exactly are, uh, are channels? So in a previous tutorial, we actually talked about go routines and what uh, we re realized go routines are is a mechanism inside of Go uh, to very simply spawn so uh, something that's akin to a thread and execute those threads concurrently. Um, now, when you have multiple threads or multiple Go routines that are executing concurrently, you need some mechanism to communicate between them, maybe to pass messages, maybe to pass common data, or maybe even just to synchronize the data between two multiple Go routines. In most uh, languages, the way you would do these uh, is through what are called mutexes, uh, which are applied to shared data structures. A mutex is basically a shortening of the name mutual exclusion. And so really what happens is in a mute, when a mutex is applied to a data structure, like say an array, that array gets locked to be only available to one thread and then when that thread finishes it releases the lock or it releases the mutex and then another thread can access that same uh, data structure. Uh, in Go, we do have the concept of locks and mutexes, but channels make it super easy for us uh, to communicate because they actually are very simple to use, as we'll see in the program, and they make it really easy and lightweight for us to communicate back and forth between Go routines. Okay, so what is the objective of the program that we're going to write? The program we're going to write is very simple. If you Once you look at it, you know, you'll realize it's just a few lines of code. And the objective of the program is for two Go routines to talk to each other by sending an integer into the channel between each other. The integer is a random integer that is generated by the sending Go routine. And, and it essentially tells the receiving Go routine how many times to blink a specific LED. In this case, we write a function called blink green that blinks a green LED, and then the main go routine, we're basically going to blink a yellow LED. And so the main go routine will generate a random number that it sends through the channel. The blink green go routine picks that up. It essentially blinks the green uh, LED that many times. Then it generates a random number and sends it back through the channel to main and then the main uh, go routine blinks the yellow LED that many times. It's a very simple program, uh, basically allowing these two go routines to communicate to, uh, with each other uh, through this integer channel. Okay, so uh, before we actually get into the code here, um, let's dive in uh, to the, the circuit diagram for this. A circuit diagram is a fairly simple one, right? It's a, it's a very, very, very simple circuit. It's very similar to the GPIO and interrupt circuit we had previously, where we used to have two LEDs and then we had a switch. In this case, we just removed the switch and we just have two LEDs. One is a yellow one that's connected to GPIO 16, and the other is a green LED that's connected to GPIO 15, both the LEDs are connected through current limiting 330 ohm resistors to ground. Um, so super simple circuit, nothing complex here at all. Um, let's just dive right into our um, let's just dive right into our uh, code. Okay, so what I've done here is I've actually, um, instead of rather than typing this code in front of you guys each time, uh, and half the time I make mistakes and you have to see all the typing errors that I have, I actually wrote the program and I've actually folded up all the code so that it's easy for me to explain the pieces that I'm going to explain. So if you kind of dive into it, obviously as uh, uh, with any Go program that's executable, we, we have package main. Um, we basically import uh, three packages. We import machine and time as we always do pretty much with all, every piece of code that we've written so far. But I'm also importing one additional package which is math.ran, which is essentially a set of random number utilities that are part of Go. Then I define uh, two constants, uh, one for each of the uh, pins to which an LED is connected. So a, one called yellow LED, which is the connected to GPIO 16, and the other called green LED that's connected to GPIO 15. Nothing new here. 
Then I write a configure function where I configure both the LEDs to be outputs. So I, I use the mode machine.pin output. Again, stuff that we've done many times before. Um, and then I also um, uh, wrote a function blink, which again, I think I've written before, uh, which essentially takes a pin as an input and uh, the number of times to blink that pin as another input. And it essentially goes through and blinks that pin uh, that many times, n number of times, um, with a time period of 500 milliseconds. In other words, it blinks the pin twice a second. So nothing unique here. Nothing for us to see. Let's just continue on into the sort of the, the meat of our program. Um, so let's first come to main, right? Inside of main, what I've done is I've created a channel uh, called C, which is a channel of integers, as you can see from this definition here, right? So you can see that C is a channel of integers. Um, I then initialize a random numbers generator, so I initialize the seed, and then I generate a random number between one and five uh, using the rand.intn function. I call configure uh, because I want to uh, configure the two LED pins as outputs. And finally, I go and I, I start up a go routine called blink green. So let's see what is in blink green. Right, so in blink green, um, it basically has an infinite loop, and blink green takes a channel as an input. It's the same channel that we created before, so you know you have to pass the channel into all of the uh, functions that consume it. And um, what blink green does, the first line in blink green is basically the assignment of this channel to a num uh, to an integer called numblinks or a variable called numblinks. And if you notice here, there's this arrow syntax that exists. And if you really look closely at the arrow, the arrow is originating from the channel towards the number. And the way that's how I keep this in straight in my head because otherwise the direction of the arrow just confuses me. And so in this case, the way I see it is something is coming out of the channel into numblinks. And so numblinks is essentially receiving a message from that channel. Now, the channel that we created here in the make uh, function call is uh, basically what we call an unbuffered channel. Um, if we specified a second uh, argument to the make function, which would be an integer, um, that would then create a, chan a buffered channel with a capacity that is equal to that argument. So, you know, let's say we wanted a buffered channel of five messages. We would basically specify uh, in the make uh, function, we would basically go in and specify make chan int, uh, comma five. In this case, we don't want it to be buffered for a specific reason that I'll explain in just a second. And so we, we have no second argument here in make. Okay, so what's the reason for using an unbuffered channel? The cool thing about using an unbuffered channel is that if the channel is unbuffered, the receiving go routine will actually block until it receives a message on that channel. So in this case, what happens is we kick off blink green uh, from main, but blink green essentially blocks right on this line until it receives a message through the channel. And when it does receive a message through the channel, um, it goes down here, it, it actually brings the green, green LED um, uh, a certain number of times, the number of times that it blinks the green LED is specified by um, what's coming through the channel. Then it goes off and generates a random number and sends that through the channel. Look at how the arrow is now pointing. It's pointing from num blinks to the channel. And so it sends a message, uh, that random number that it has generated, it sends it into the channel uh, as an output. Okay, so what's happening here with main now? So in main, the last time we looked at main, we basically were on this line where we started up blink green. And as we said, blink green essentially waits for an input to come to it via the channel. And then when that input comes, it blinks the green LED that many times. It then generated a random number and it sent that random number back out through the same channel. Now in main, we again, we start up an infinite loop the first thing we do is just for the sake of it, I blink the yellow LED a certain number of times, I generate a random number, and then I send that random number through the channel. So what's happening here? When main first fires up, it fires off the blink green go routine. Blink green is now blocked. 
waiting for a message. Main blinks the yellow LED a random number of times. It generates another random integer. It sends that into the channel. As soon as this message goes into the channel, blink green is going to receive the message. And so it starts its execution. It is now unblocked. And it starts the execution of the blink uh, for the green LED. And, and, and it's, while it's doing that, main will essentially drop down to the next line, where if you notice what's happening is I'm now waiting here, or I'm blocking, waiting for a message to come back from the channel and be assigned to n before I can loop in infinitely. In other words, I've, let, me, let me talk through this again because it gets a little confusing, right? So I sent a message from main to a channel. There was a go routine that was waiting on an input from the channel. That go routine was called blink green. So as soon as it received the message from the channel, blink green did its magic, and then it dumped a message back into the channel. Meanwhile, main basically is now waiting for an input from the channel, which it receives on this line. Once it receives that message, main is now unblocked. It goes off, it blinks the yellow LED a certain number of times, then it generates a new random message. It sends that message back into the channel where it can be received by blink green that is now blocked, waiting on that message. And this cycle goes repeats over and over again infinitely. So in effect, what's happening is each of the go routines is generating this random number, sending it through the channel, and the other go routine is waiting on that, the receipt of that message. And so these two things are basically sort of passing the baton between each other, or playing ping pong, if you will, is what I like to call it. I kind of didn't call the program ping pong because it just felt a little informal, but, but you, get the you get the message or you get the general idea. Um, now, I've already flashed this uh, to my uh, Pico, so I'm not going to flash it again. Uh, but you guys know the command. It's tiny go uh, flash minus, uh, you know, tiny go flash. Uh, and then, you know, you basically just, the uh, target is Pico, and then you have uh, the uh, program name, which is channels.go as the argument. Okay, so uh, let's basically now jump to the camera to see what exactly uh, we've got going here. As you can see, the program's already running, so it's kind of, you know, it's a bit of a letdown, but let me uh, reset the program and then we can see what happens. So just observe uh, the number of times that the yellow LED and the red LED blink, and that'll give you a good sense of what's happening here. Okay, so I reset. Okay, so notice what happened here. Yellow blinked twice, green blinked three times, yellow blinked twice, green blinked three times, yellow blinked twice, green blinked twice, yellow blinked four times, green blinked three times, and so on and so forth. In other words, these two LEDs are basically communicating, well, the LEDs aren't communicating. The functions or the go routines that um, blink these LEDs are communicating between each other, sending these random integers back and forth through the channel, and then the receiving uh, go routine is blinking the LEDs correctly. And that's it. Very simple program. I mean, as you notice, I mean, if it weren't for the comments and all the spacing, this would probably be, I don't know, let's say 25, 30 lines of code. It's not a lot. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's a very simple program, very easy to send messages back and forth between go routines using channels. And that's really it for this particular episode. Um, I'm going to uh, put a link to the tutorial article that I wrote on my website in the description. And um, so, so please feel free to read that article. And I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel or like my channel or like this video. Uh, post some comments uh, down below. Uh, would love, love, love to get feedback and any um, sort of common learnings that we could get out of all of this. And so before we go, um, let's see uh, what's next. 
So what's next is I want to, in the next video, I'll be talking a lot about SPI, which is the serial peripheral interface, and using that to, um, to uh, configure and control a shift register. In this case, it's the very popular, the wildly popular, actually, the 74 HC595 shift register. Uh, what a shift register does is it basically takes input through a serial uh, connection, and it, can, it, it basically shifts that input into a parallel connection. Uh, into a set of parallel outputs. Um, so uh, shift registers are very common in uh, general hardware. The cool thing about them is that uh, you know, with just two or three lines, which we use for a serial connection, uh, you can actually expand the output to um, eight lines, or in some cases, I mean, in, if you cascade them together, most shift registers actually have a way to cascade uh, together. And so you can actually cascade more than one. And so just two lines or three lines out of your uh, microcontroller where pins are at a premium, um, just two or three lines uh, can now translate to, let's just say, you know, eight or 16 or 32 outputs. Um, and it's super easy to use them. And so in the next uh, episode, we will uh, take a quick uh, look at that. Uh, we look at a simple program that helps you control the 74 HC595. And uh, what we'll do is we'll make the shift register um, uh, count up and down, or count up basically, um, uh, based on the input that it's receiving from the microcontroller. And that is it. Uh, I look f I'm really happy that you guys could join me, and I look forward to talking to you guys in the next episode of my show. Thanks. Bye.